All right, so let's start with CDAR. So we talked about stock assessments, right? Stock assessments happen through the CDAR process. So a lot of people are like, well, they come up with these stock assessments and they don't, they don't include us. It's not transparent. The CDAR process is 100% transparent. That's what makes it so slow. So these stock assessments take a really long time because the CDAR process is something that is very transparent and also they're burdened down because they have to do stock assessments for the South Atlantic and for uh, the Gulf and they're managing the Caribbean as well. So the Southeast region is the Gulf, the South Atlantic, and the Caribbean. So from North Carolina to the Keys, from the Keys to Brownsville, Texas, and then also the U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. So there's a lot of stock assessment requirements, a lot of uh, needs, and a lot of uh, stretching of the folks. So definitely creates a lot of challenge. Then you have the state uh, the states, Atlantic States Fishery Man or Atlantic States Management, Atlantic States Fishery Management. I don't know the states. Uh, you have the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council and then Gulf States Fishery Management Council. So there's a lot of different jurisdictional bodies that are involved in the CDAR process. And basically, the CDAR process or Southeast Data Assessment Review is what CDAR stands for. Is what works together to provide the stock assessments and how they are worked out and kind of worked through. So it improves species priority. It basically controls the priority of what stock assessments are going to be coming up next. And they work through trying to optimize and make the stock assessment uh, timelines as efficient as possible by trying to limit the, the needs on the scientists and overburden the science uh, scientists. So they're very transparent, as I mentioned before. All workshops and webinars are open to the public through their website. The CDAR website is not the greatest to navigate, but they have a good website, and you can pay attention to what's coming up, what's going on, and you can always pop into any meeting at any time. The documents are all publicly available on their website as well. If you have questions, you can always call, and they will connect you with someone who's more than happy to talk to you. Often, they don't get a lot of phone calls, so when they, when they get you on the phone, they want to explain everything, and sometimes you have to cut them short because they want to try to explain everything because they want it to be as transparent as possible. So all assessment input and data is available to the public, and there's multiple opportunities for public comment through the stock assessment process. CDAR is made up by federal and state, ADIS, uh, federal and state agencies and universities and scientists, uh, there's federal and state analysts. There's a ton of fishermen opportunities. So you as a fisherman or fisherwoman can actually be involved in the stock assessment if you want. They ask for fishermen's involvement. And your job is to sit there and say, nope, you're wrong. Nope, I like this. Nope, I don't like this. It's pretty entertaining. Uh, but it is a little time consuming. So if you don't have time to actually be actively involved, you can just pop in and out of the webinar, which sometimes I try to do as well, especially for stock assessments I'm really interested in. So a lot of uh, participants, these are just some of the participants. Uh, the CDAR is ran by a steering committee of, made up of the different council chairs and executive director of the different councils, the Caribbean, South Atlantic, and Gulf councils. Uh, the Southeast Regional Office, uh, which is in St. Pete, the regional administrator, the commission executive directors of the Gulf States and Atlantic States Fishery Commission, uh, the Science Center, the Southeast Fishery Science Center, which is in uh, uh, Miami. This is SEFSC, Southeast Fishery Science Center. It's in Miami. Highly Migratory Species is HMS. And then FWC, we all know what FWC is. The steering committee approves policies and decides the priority and schedule of stock assessments and also the budget and human resources. So they do all this to basically go through these research track and benchmark assessments and try to give us information about fisheries uh, and biomasses and different uh, things. But the problem that is constantly being balanced is whether they want to be really transparent and thorough. Uh, but if they're really transparent and thorough, they're not timely. If they're transparent and timely, they're not going to be as thorough. If they're timely and thorough, they're not going to be as transparent. So this is kind of the, the challenge here. You can you got to pick two. You can't pick three. It can't be transparent, timely, and thorough. And right now, they're trying to be transparent and thorough, which makes them not timely. But they're trying to be more timely, 
which makes them either less thorough or less transparent. So this is the constant kind of struggle of the stock assessment and CDAR process. And uh, right now, like I said, they're very transparent and very thorough, which is not timely. That's why right now for Gag Grouper, the terminal year of Gag Grouper last assessment is 2019. So all of the management that we're seeing for Gag Grouper is based off data in 2019. We're in 2024, guys. That's five years ago. That's because the process is transparent and thorough, but not timely. So they haven't done a stock assessment on Gag Grouper since, again, the terminal year was 2019. Now, it completed in, like, 2021, so that stock assessment isn't that old, but they use data from 2019 because, remember what I said earlier, that data takes a long time to, to interpret and to actually be ready for a stock assessment to get plugged in. So the most recent stock assessment for GAGS was ended in 2021, using data from 2019 and we're managing it in 2024. That is a big problem that they're trying to work to improve. So uh, CDAR process works by starting with a, a data assessment. There's a data stage, data workshop, and then once they get through the data stage, they start the assessment process. Then there's an assessment review and they review the, uh, the data and uh, assessment stages. And then they go through peer review. So data assessment review, data assessment review, and that's how it works. And in the review, there's third-party peer reviewers. So a lot of people are like, why can't I give my, my information on an app? Why can't it be their cell phone app and I can just tell them what I caught today? That would be nice, but that wouldn't pass a third-party peer review, and they would throw it out of the stock assessment. So your data would be useless. So all that work you did on your little cell phone app to tell them what you caught and kept, what you caught and kept, kept and what you caught and threw away, wouldn't help. It would all get thrown away because it wouldn't pass the third-party peer review. Then once the stock assessment happens and it works through the CDAR process, it goes to the SSC. Once the SSC has it, the SSC, or Science and, Science and Statistical uh, Committee, the SSC reviews that, that stock assessment from CDAR and then starts to give advice in setting the ABC, the allowable biological catch. They transmit that to the council. So again, stock assessments, how it works, fisheries independent science, fisheries dependent science, plugged in, really complicated modeling, goes through the CDAR process. That information is then given to the SSC. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the SSC, then how the SSC goes into the council process and how you can get involved. But first,